Welcome to the Financial Times in Hong Kong. Malaysia has, relatively speaking, been a success story economically in Asia, moving from a poor nation in the middle of the last century to an upper middle income nation now. But the country doesn't want to stay there and stagnate in the so-called middle income trap. It wants to become a high income developed nation, boosting local demand, encouraging foreign investment, and producing more sophisticated exports. Today I'm joined by Idris Jala, a minister in the Malaysian government in charge of the economic transformation of the nation. Mr. Jala, thank you so much for joining us at the FT. Can you talk a little bit about what you're doing to encourage foreign investment, and perhaps why is it important to be focusing on this right now for Malaysia? When we looked at countries that had made it to the high-income economy, the select countries in the world that have done so, we found there were two things that we needed to do and change the way in which we run our economy. The first one was needing to be focused. We cannot be champions in every sector in, in Malaysia. The second one is to create the conditions for competitiveness to flourish in Malaysia. So we had to make a lot of policy reforms, altogether 51 policy reforms. We believe that this is the path towards high income economy. One of the common critiques though of the Malaysian yeah. economy, a structural critique, is that there are still preferences for historically marginalized communities, uh, specifically the, the Malay population, um, and that this sort of can hinder development by introducing inefficiencies in the economy. Um, what are your thoughts about how that system is working and what are sort of how does the private sector-led development that you're trying to encourage kind of work within yeah. that existing framework? All countries do have disadvantaged groups that begin from certain point to another point. What you needed to do is you recognize the need. So what we then did was competition must always be, be, be based on merit. But there will be programs that you put in there to help the bottom 40% in society, the marginalized, the ones that need help. So what we needed to do was to make sure that we have an economic transformation that's merit-based, but also recognizing special needs that is needed. There, there's talk that Malaysia might soon implement a minimum wage. Um, what impact do you think, or what impact are you hoping that will have on the type of foreign investment that you see within Malaysia? When we came out with the proposal to implement minimum wage, the, the one and the most important things that we, we agreed as a key parameter was to make sure there was dialogue between how we do it covering the interests of employees and unions, at the same time, employers. And I do believe it's very important to do this. The reason for us why is because we need, as we, our economy grows to become high income, we need to make sure we'll deal with the disadvantaged people, the poor people. And we need to make sure that we are inclusive in sharing the prosperity of our nation to everybody, not just the rich people, not just the middle income, but at the same time, the low income. And this covers not just Malaysian, but foreign workers that come to our land. We need to treat them well, too. Mm -hmm. I understand that one of um, a big challenge facing, facing Malaysia yeah. is the issue of brain drain, particularly, I think, among some educated Chinese population. Um, can you talk a little bit about sort of w how much of an issue that is to the country, and if you think that the program that you're running has made any progress in reversing that? To deal with this, we created an organization called Talent Corporation to, uh, to engage the Malaysian diaspora, the Malaysians that have left shores, and then ask them if they would like to come back to do and participate in the nation building. And that's a dialogue that we've begun now. Uh, that's good. And the other thing that we've done is at the same time to embrace and welcome foreign talent into our country. So I think in an organization, in a country that intends to do well and plans to do well, you need to have the talent, whether they are Malaysians or not. To, to end on a bit of a forward-looking note, yeah. obviously the economic climate for next year looks like it'll still be quite tough. Um, can you talk a little bit about what, what you're expecting to see for next year and how the economic climate will impact your ability to meet some of the targets you've set? I think it's very important for us to work on implementing all the strategic reform initiatives to create the conditions for competitiveness and productivity and profitability to exist in Malaysia. And that will attract a lot of investments to come in. When the investments do come in, it will create gross national income for us. It will create jobs for everyone here. And I do believe that you know, I want to quote Dale Carnegie. He said, it's tragic when we all stop living. We all so focus in this beautiful rose garden in the horizon. And we forgot to look at the roses blooming outside our windows. Mr. Jala, thank you so much for joining us. For more news and analysis, please go to FT.com.